Matt Lenehan, Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store. I'm here, first time ever. Surrey, Michael Conlon. First day. Yeah. Michael, look, um, you've come back over from Miami. New team, seem revitalising yourself. How are you feeling? Fight's only a couple of weeks away. I'm excited, mate. I'm, I'm feeling great. Uh, the training has been fantastic. My feet are, are burnt off me with blisters, but it's uh, all part of the process with, with Pedro and the movement and, and the things we've been working on. So, yeah, it's been fantastic. I'm really happy. Let's just talk about this link up. So, obviously, you had a couple of runs at a world title with Adam Boo. You played um, a big part in your career. You, I think, owed it to yourself to almost see and have this change. Um, you've been working with Pedro in Miami. Um, you two seem to have struck up quite a bond in a very short space of time. Just give us an overview of what it's been like working with him, his training methods. Um, he's worked with the likes of Miguel Cotto, um, Rigandau. Just talk, talk to me about this man and what he's sort of done for you. Yeah, listen, he's an unbelievable coach and a coach I've always admired from afar for a long time. Um, you know, I actually went on when I was looking at coaches and I went on the mission and I actually see he had, he had messaged me and I had even seen it after the fight, saying like it's double easy world champion stuff and I was like happy yes, so I reached out to him as well and obviously went and tried all the coaches and Pedro ticked all the box for me, you know, he's trained 21 Olympic champions so he understands the amateur pedigree. He's also trained numerous world champions, uh, most recently Noel Malikian, um, who just won the cruiserweight title. Um, so yeah, uh, he's a fantastic coach. Um, trained the likes of Cato, um for the Margarita rematch for Mayweather. We've trained Rigo for Dunner and stuff, and you know he's he's unbelievable. And his his training methods and stuff, it's just getting me back to using what I have best, and it's, it's my boxing skill, and my boxing ability, and, and my legs and my feet. And you know we're we're non-stop moving. Uh, we're on the ball and it's it's fantastic. Has that been missing? Because I know when I was speaking to you about, obviously when you joined him, what was the purpose of it? And it wasn't necessarily to maybe, you know, change change it completely, but it's just to get the best out here and tweak little bits here and there. Have you seen the benefits in this short space of time? You you feel it in yourself? You, you look you look like you've got a spring in your step. Obviously I've watched you do the, it's only a light workout today. I know you've got stuff, stuff happening tomorrow, a bit more serious than this, but you seem like you sort of got that energy back for boxing. Yeah, definitely. Um, he kind of has revitalised me in a sense. Um, I found that love and, and that passion for it again and that want to learn the new style, the new stances. It's not, it's, not change, it's not even changing what I already have. It's just enhancing what I have and, and, and not trying to settle me down or do different things. Making me use my attributes, um, which is great. Some things, you know, I could have been lazy on. What would have been my movement? You know, staying in the pocket probably a little bit too long and doing things like that. Where, you know, probably fitting with my balls a little bit too much is what Pedro says. And you know, he's more on the brain and using my brain. So, um, I've I've really enjoyed it so far. And uh, as you said, we have we have struck up a great bond already. Um, he's a very very smart coach. Someone who I think. Uh, when I listen to him and you, you hear his methods and what he's doing, and then he shows you, like when I got there, he had a plan done for the for the full training camp already, and then obviously that plan's adjusted as you go along, you know whether how, depending on how you're feeling or what's going on, um, and it's been great. You know, he's saying he's I think he's genius. I'm going to say he's got a bit of a quirky personality as well. I mean, some of the content that he's been pumping out, uh, Mundo Boxing, if you've not seen it, go check him out on Instagram, um, Pedro Diaz's Instagram page. It's been incredible. Look, after the, the last defeat, obviously, I know you felt a bit deflated and, and things like that, but in terms of where you're going, you've still got your eyes firmly on that prize of becoming world champion. You've Jordan Gill coming up in front of you in a couple of weeks. We'll go into that in a bit more depth on Belfast on fight week, but just touch on that in terms of him. You've mentioned you used to spar him, um, so you know what he's about. It's quite a serious fight for both of you because you're both coming off um, knockout losses. Do you, how are you dealing with like the pressure of that? Because you seem like sort of you know is where it is kind of attitude. Yeah, listen, it's not something I'm thinking we're going oh. This is make or break and all this place. You did that before the last one. Before and I think it was just unnecessary. Um, but this time I'm just getting and I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about getting and performing and being myself and, and doing what I do. Um, listen, Jordan's a very good fighter. And you know, if I'm not on my game, Jordan can win. You know, he, he has the ability, he's, he's good talent, he's good skill set. Um, 
So you, ha you got to be switched on, and especially people like Jordan, you know, people could easily overlook him uh, after his kind of run of form, kind of, and you could go, ah, well, you know, he's going to walk back in this and do what he has to do, but, you know, I I'm not going to win that mindset, I'm going to win that mindset of, this is, this is a real fight, this is, this is tough, this is like a, like a, a cat which is afraid and, and backed into the corner and starts to commit swinging and that's what I think Jordan is going to be like, you know, he's going to be in Belfast, the crew, the atmosphere is something you'll never experience, um, so it's good that you get to experience that but um, I don't know how he handles it and if he handles it well, fantastic for a podium but it doesn't matter, the result is going to be the same and it's going to be a Michael Conlon win. I spoke to um, Jordan when I heard rumblings of this fight and he alluded to the fact that he was doing a bit of work with Ben Davison. I spoke to Lee Wood about a week, two weeks ago and I asked him and he says, yeah, um, he's been doing some work, etc. I asked Lee if he you know, got any, has he given him tips and advice? Yeah, he's been speaking to him. But what do you make of that? He was linked up with Ben Davison. He was previously with um, Dave Caldwell, but so doing bits down there in Harlow with Ben. What do you make of that? Because obviously they've, they've been a, a foe before, haven't they? Yeah, listen, don't make anything of it. It doesn't matter who's in his corner. Um, and if you really go off, you know, corners and tactics and stuff, what was the tactic? Take a beating for, for 11 and a half rounds and hope to land the shot, which he did, but, you know, there's no need to talk about that now. Absolutely not. Um, I was speaking to Lee and I said, you know, you've got options now. You know, he's moving up in weight. I know your ambition is to be a world champion. So my question would be is, is it going to be at odds with yourself? Because if Lee's moving up in weight, would you consider moving up in weight to fight him in a rematch or to fight for a world title at a higher weight? I know this is at 130. This fits, but this fits at 130. Um, Lee's mainly at the 130. Um, and with Matrim now, Joe they're at 130. Um, there's plenty of options at 130. And... You know, for me, I want to be world champion, 100%. But also, everything has to be financially correct because I'm in this game. I understand it. I've been around it long enough. I'm actually in the game 25 years this year. 25 years. I'm 32 on Sunday. I've been in boxing since, since I was seven, so I was 25. Huh? Um, so yeah, it's it's a, it's a long, long time. Um, and I know that the main thing any kid from working class area wants to get out of boxing is, you know, they be able to buy their own house and to be able to, you know, come like kind of financially stable. Now I've done that, um, but I gotta think about my kids and uh, and their kids and you know whatever fate is the biggest financially rewarding is is the one I want, but also. If I can mix in a world title in there, that's what I want, and that's my goal is to be world champion. So it would be hard if you said to me, we've got a world title here and we've got record payday here, what are you going to take? I suppose is that, that's going to come down to what your, your gut says more than anything. It's like you say, you mentioned not once, can't you pop your, you seem to have done okay out of the sport for the time you've been in it. You, you seem, in what you say, like financially okay. So that's what I meant by, is it going to come at odds if there's a few extra quid this side? But there's a chance to tick that box because with your amateur pedigree and background, I mean, one of, if not one of the most successful amateurs to come out of Ireland. I mean, I listed it, I know we jokingly did it last time European, Commonwealth, Olympic, gold, bronze, you know, kind of thing. So, is that going to play a part at all? Are you going to be like, if the opportunity is here for the world title, but bigger money's here? Is that always going to be, you're always going to be at loggerheads with that? No, you know what? I'll go for the world title. Go for the world title. Why now? Why? Why under these circumstances is it like you? You still believe that you are destined to become world champion. It's still like for, forefront, forefront of your mind, isn't it? You can tell that like, you've ever since we've spoken. It's I will be world champion. I will be world champion. Forgetting what's going on with the defeats, it's still that's still the goal. And he's I spoke to Pedro Diaz, and he said, look, that'll be be a huge achievement for him because he likes to make champions, not necessarily have them. That must that must be good for you hearing that from him as well. Definitely. Listen, I think he's a fantastic coach. He's on the ball and you know we spoke about it. And you know the goal is to become world champion. And not just one title, you know, more, multiple titles. Um, and he believes in me, he showed that faith in me and you know, I believe in myself. And I think now with the right team behind me, he's there. Now we just need the chance.
You must be buzzing as well to be going back to Belfast. I know, obviously, what happened last time, distant memory, and this is a fresh start for you, but that atmosphere, that raw, you were talking to me about might be doing an undercard fight, I don't know yet, but you're not, you, you, that didn't last very long, did it? And I said to you at the time, nah, you're not fuck, You're not going back down to an undercard. You're back main eventing. Was, was, that, was that a tough one? Because well, when he got off, he's like, ah, we, we do it again. It was, you know, it was like, I was like, you know what? When I come back, I'll do it low key. I'll go fucking someone's on their card in fucking Manchester or something like that. Like it's a low key kind of thing. Just come back in there and get the get the feet wet again. But then obviously you know, we link up with Matt Trim. They they put the options on the table and I said it's okay. If you need me at Belfast, you need me at Belfast. Let's do it. So um, yeah, no problem. Uh, I'm I'm excited about it, man. Belfast is a is a real special place. Um, for boxing, and you know, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of that history, and be pr proud to be a part of that city's kind of boxing heritage, um, and adding to it all the time. So now nah, I, I need to get a world title for them, but you know I know that December December second is going to be fantastic. The atmosphere will be fantastic. Some fantastic fights, match them in co promotion with Conlon Boxing. You know what I mean? It's Shout out a hundred percent. We're listening. We're not. We're not here to take part, we're here to take over the old saying, isn't it? Shout out to Connor. <laughs> uh, but no, listen, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a great link up for us. You know, obviously, me saying I'm a match room, but also having the Conlon boxing, Conlon boxing on the banner as well is, is really smart. And, and having our fighters on the card is really smart. And, you know, the card itself, man. It's stacked, isn't it? I mean, I'm not going to. I'm saying this, but even before that main event was made, like I was saying, I mean, Tyrone McKenna, Lewis Crocker is, and if you ever wanted to get into boxing, switch on, watch that fight, and then you're down the car, Kevin Ajako, Troy, um, Sean McCombs in a great fight with Sam Maxwell, Cameron Vong's just been added. Um, you're not going to get many. I like Cameron. Um, from what I've seen him so far, I think he's a talented kid. Uh, keeps the feet in the ground. And he will with Jamie. Jamie will keep his feet in the ground. Uh, Jamie and the age will definitely uh, keep him grounded, and I think that he can go a long way. He's so talented, so skillful. Um, just needs to remain, you know, on the ground, and that's the main thing. It's the hardest thing for young kids because they get carried away. A lot of kids will get carried away with a hype, but if you have the right team around you, you know, it's it's good. Because then I think he does have the right team around him. Um, the the coming event I think is 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 uh, key even but I would have had I, and I think it's worthy of main event Lewis first Turo. Well, it was supposed to be a, a main event. It was supposed event. to be our main event and then obviously I came in and fucking upset the apple cart and I felt <laughs> bad doing it you know because oh, I bet you did yeah oh, God, I really did because that would have been Turo's first time main event in his in his home city and stuff and um in a very very hard fight against Lewis because Lewis is a is a dangerous, dangerous guy and, and looks in fantastic shape and it's a, like this is the, the hard part of being a boxer still you can't sit back and enjoy the cards because you gotta fucking you gotta fight yourself and be focused on your own thing but that's a fight I really want to see um, I'm interested in Ajarko versus Troy uh, terrific fight I think skill set ways Kevin is you know should should win but I think with you know the, the rumblings of everything that's went on and apparently not wanting to take the fight and not accepting the fight but then you know it was after a week before in the kitty card he didn't accept it and saying like they wanted a different different type of fight. Well in fairness to Keevan and I can only speak from what I've spoke to him about he was like I've never turned down a fight kind of thing he was adamant he's not turned it down but I think when I mean, you look at it good for both obviously tries um, sparring Josh obviously who had that um, had that fight with and he bounced back after that but in terms of Conlon boxing just moving away from just you as the individual you must be proud of the stamp you, that you, this company is making because if you look at the history in Ireland the plethora of talent they've had from top to bottom I mean you guys have been doing this since before this link up with Matchroom came on board and they've now obviously seen obviously with yourself the fights they can make but when you look at the car from top to bottom there's going to be a strong future for Irish boxing and yourselves Jamie obviously at the head of that doing all the stuff you must be you must be quite proud of that well it was the reason me and Jamie created Colin Boxing you know let's have something for after the game let's have something for when, when I finish and that was the reason they like, Colin Boxing, we, we winged it at the start. You know, I, I've, I've 
like our, our whole first show was, was me and Jamie financing the whole thing. I lost fucking 50 grand or something doing that. You know what I mean? It was like, what the fuck? It was risky. It's a risky game. And you realize uh, they're the fucking outdoor park shows, which cost even more and all the insurances and things like that. It's, it's scary and um, it's a risk, but it was a risk that we were willing to take. And it's starting to pay off. It's starting to pay off. We're getting our fighters. We have, we have a good team. Um, and obviously now with like co promotional stuff and all, it works well. It looks nice, and hopefully we can grow and get bigger and bigger. In terms of matchroom, um, coming on board obviously for this part of your career, the, the most the most vital part of your career, let's yeah. say it as it is. They've got a lot of fighters for you, kind of thing. There's yeah. fights to make. You mentioned there, Cordina. I know obviously Lee keeps in talks about. There's Warrington who wants his rematch with Lee. There's a lot of moving parts. Have they give you any assurances of, look, Michael, if you do the business, obviously. This is look, not looking past Jordan. You've got a job to do, and he's there fighting for everything because he can take what he, he's, he's there to take what you're what you're signing on for, kind of thing. So it's not taking it away from him, but providing you get past him, if they said, "Look, this is what we can do for you. This is where we want you to go," they got a plan because I know you just won't sign up willy nilly, kind of thing. Yeah, listen, G Jamie, and the, Jamie and them guys have spoke about the plan and, and what's happening, but listen, it all 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 depends on the next fight first. You can't, you can't, you can't look past that. But there is a plan in place. There is big fights there to be made. Every single one of the names you've just mentioned have been mentioned. Um, so yeah, l l let's hope. Like the one, the one I obviously want is, is Lee. Um, Lee, of course. He's going to be there fight night, and you know what happens at these fight nights. Like, providing you get the victory, he'll be there supporting his mate. Um, when I asked him about the rematch, he said it won't happen, and I just went, "Why is that? Was my mate to win?" I'm like, all right, I said, but Brian goes, no, no, it won't happen, but he'll be there. Do you expect any of the usual carry on? What happens with all fighters? Everyone's done it, like you win, he get in the ring, and then all of a sudden that fight's on everyone's lips again. Probably, I pr probably could be the case. Um, yeah, listen, if it is, it is. I don't even think about that. Um, I just think about what's in front of me, and that's, that's Jordan, and you know, I'm going to end this fight, you know, I'm not going to win. Not fighting on emotion, not using any emotion. Honestly, if I really wanted to, I can call on that emotion and have that fire in my belly, but I don't need to. I just go in there and do a job. Um, the tactical plan and, 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 and stuff we have, I believe I, I, I did one right. You have got that switch in you. I saw it in an interview. I can't quote what you said, but it was almost like, boom, someone had almost lit that fire in you, and you were like, look, this is what's happening, this is how it's going down kind of thing. Have you got to sort of channel that a bit with this man? Because he's, he's he's the man with the plan, like, from top to bottom. Have you got to really sort of channel that? Because he's worked on getting your mind in the right place as well, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he works on everything, yeah. he's part of the whole plan. And, you know, he's definitely done that. Um, you know, he says, you can do all the talking you want, but when we're in the ring, it's game. It's, it's nothing else. We're on, we're, on, we're on a game plan. We're on focus. We don't fight on emotion. We don't fight with our balls. We fight on brains. And that's the main thing. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 it is. Sometimes it's hard. Because you hard. naturally like a fight, don't you? You mean, and people, right. people, people to you, people to you, people to you, like, it's easier to criticize and or you, you, you'll see all this, the crap that gets written online. But ultimately, when it does get tough, you're not wanting to shy away. You're standing like you stood in the pocket with Lopez. Everyone was like, he's like standing in the pocket of him. Lee, when you had that early success, you carried on. It was like, let's go. We can have that fight. But you've now got to pick and choose your moments and really let that in. But yeah, you got to stick to the game plan and uh, stop using using my bravado and balls and stuff. I don't need to use any machismo or macho-ness and just go and do, do my thing. And no. Oh, it's, it's good, I'll be, I'll be sound, no problem. You got a message to Jordan before you sign this off? Nah, you had a good training here. Simple as that, nothing. No badness in it. I don't wish any badness on you, but I will put hurt on you, and that's that's just the fake game, isn't it? It's the fake game. Absolutely right. Sign this off. Message to the fans, people in Belfast. We will catch up in Belfast. We still do a bit there. But, um, yeah, have you got a message for these people in Belfast? Because yeah. tickets are flying. Yeah, there's a few tickets left. If you haven't got your tickets, make sure you get them before Fate Week because on Fate Week they're gone, I think. I think as soon as Fate Week comes and people have that atmosphere and obviously Mushroom and the PR machine that Mushroom is are in town, boom, they disappear. So 
if you haven't got them, get them now. Michael Conlon, always a pleasure. Thanks for having us down here. Um, and we will catch up in a couple of weeks in Belfast. Good morning. Cheers, mate.